Back stocks getting a boost today after Fed commentary suggested higher yields make it less likely that the Fed has to hike interest rates. Joining us now is Bob Elliott from Unlimited. Bob, beginning of the year, you liked cash. Now, especially in light of the unrest in the Middle East, you hate it and you think gold and commodities are in better position. Why? Well, conflict is typically inflationary. And I think we've had an experience over the course of most of our professional lives where we've basically had an incredible peace dividend that has supported both bonds and stocks relative to gold and commodities. And while it's uncertain exactly how this is going to play out uh, over the course of the next couple of years, the idea that we would have uh, increased conflict relative to the last 20 or 30 years uh, seems pretty compelling to me. And it's a situation that most investors aren't particularly prepared for. And today's market action, particularly before the Fed's do dovish comments, really gave indication as to what rising conflict might look like, which is good for commodities and gold and pretty bad for stocks and, uh, and sort of okay for bonds. And that's not a great recipe for most investors. Yeah, I want to get into the bonds piece of this a little bit because to your point, I mean, it's Columbus Day, the bond market's been closed today, but we've had some proxies, right? Bond futures, you could point to the TLT ETF uh, as examples of the fact that bonds seem poised to catch the safe haven bid right now. Uh, you've come on, you've talked about the fact that there's this mismatch in valuation between stocks and bonds right now. Couldn't this potentially if you see that continue, be good, at least in the short term, for equities? Well, I think the main question is, under what conditions are we going to get a bid for bonds? And that's not the set of conditions that is good for stocks. Uh, and so it's true, the Fed, you know, a variety of different Fed speakers came out and basically painted the, the pause narrative. Um, and, and that, on the surface, looks good for the equity market. But the environment with which uh, the, the Fed is going to hold their, their pause for a long time or, or not tighten anymore is going to be a situation where, uh, in general, the, the, the growth, is, growth is slowing down in the market, um, which is pretty bad for equities, particularly given all of the uh, elevated expectations currently priced into the market. And so a good uh, a, a, a Fed that is uh, standing back and no longer tightening is not necessarily a Fed that's good for the equity market. And hmm. I think the equity market looked at a much different complex of dynamics today than, say, the gold market and the oil market, which both of which pointed to increasing uh, geopolitical concerns and inflationary pressure. So, Bob, uh, if I'm at home and I'm listening to, to Bob Elliott on overtime and I say, well, that, that makes a lot of sense, 60-40 plus cash, not great anymore. What kinds of funds capture your point here, what you're saying uh, about commodities and gold? Yeah, I mean, most investors can get a, a pretty good bang for the buck in terms of diversification through relatively modest increases uh, in gold and commodity allocations. So you can use uh, on gold, the GLD ETF or the IAU ETF are, are pretty uh, effective and liquid ways uh, to be able to get exposure to gold. Uh, and when it comes to commodities, there's several low-cost, non-K1 commodity ETFs out there. For instance, BCI is a good uh, commodity ETF that uh, could get that exposure relatively quickly. And just an increase in your exposure, say 10% to gold and 10% to commodities, can meaningfully increase your protection in the event of a uh, rising geopolitical dynamic that's going on. Okay. Some actionable takeaways. Bob Elliott, always great to have you on. Thanks for joining us.